Hello, everyone. Your attention. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Today, I want to talk about Meteor. It is a JavaScript framework. Um, we'll be going through um, how you can make really cool web apps. Um, before, um, before we get into JavaScript, I just want to tell you guys that this will be, you'll have a later piece set this semester. It should be about JavaScript. I think Maylin is first going to cover the web, HTML, PHP stuff before we move to JavaScript. And in CS50, JavaScript is um, considered like a cli uh, client code, so it only gets run in the web browser. But thanks to recent advancements in technology, we have now managed to run JavaScript as a server as well. So this has created a really cool framework because now you can write legitimately the same code for the client and the server. And when you define functions in your server, your client can call those same functions and it makes it a lot easier. Whereas before, if you're using PHP on the server, JavaScript on the front end, you have to write a PHP function and then a JavaScript version of the same function to do the same kind of work. So um, before we get started, I want to show you a demo of what Meteor can do for you. Um, and this will, I will show you the demo, which is what you'll be able to create by the end of this seminar. <coughs> we just um, go right here. This is a leaderboard app. It's actually based out of the example that Meteor gives you. Um, Meteor like is very nice because when you install it as a package, you can create, you can um, in basically play around with these four demos. And the leaderboard is the first of these demos. After the seminar, I encourage you all to just explore the other demos because I think they're really cool and they show you the power of Meteor. So what this is, this is hosted um, on leaderboard. This is um, just frankly a list of names and you can select people, they turn yellow, and then you can give them five points. And you'll notice that the list is sorted because as I give myself more and more points, I'm now at the top. So this is where we start, and um, what you'll be able to take away from this seminar is a few more features I've added to the leaderboard. We'll be covering um, how to, as well as add five points to a player, we can delete players, we can add new players, um, and um, we can choose how we want to sort them. And these are all very um, easy, easy, easy API calls that Meteor provides for you. We also have a feature here to randomize the scores. So what's really cool about this is you guys can actually all go to the site. Um, I'll put it in bigger text here. Um, sorry. One radical leaderboard. Yeah meteor.com. And when you guys go to the site, um, you should be able to edit the site and all of your edits will be visible to everybody else. So you can, um, are you guys all able to connect to the site? So play around with it. Go insert deleting some names, see what happens. So you see, everybody can play. Um, you, um, this is uh, just the default security mode for Meteor. You see that everybody can change each other's data. Don't worry, Meteor does have security. This is um, a very easily implemented feature where you could set up users and logins. But right now, anybody who visits the site can give themselves as many points as they want. So I always like this because this is a fun way to get started. And then um, we'll just talk about the details, how Meteor makes this possible. So um, I want to cover what Meteor is, and then we'll just need to cover the two prerequisites that CS50 hasn't covered enough. Um, but by the end of the term, you should be comfortable with both HTML and JavaScript to really get your hands dirty working with Meteor. And I think it's just a great way for even less comfortable students to do the final projects because they can really stay, they stay in one language and they get to see um, the changes of their work right away. So this slide shows just some of the major technologies that Meteor.js um, gives to you. Meteor is not a new technology on its own. It's really a conglomeration of all these different things we have on the internet, as well as HTML, CSS, JavaScript. We have some technologies like Node.js, which is what allows you to run JavaScript on the back end on your server, as well as some JavaScript libraries like jQuery, underscore. All of these will be familiar to you um, by the end of the semester. 
And we also get to use a database called MongoDB, which is a really um, popular database now for um, these new startups. Um, you can think of it as like MySQL, but it works very nicely with JavaScript. And there are some other technologies here, and many more I haven't listed, that all interface really nicely with Meteor. Um, I have to put this slide because sometimes I get confusion about this. Meteor is only JavaScript. It is not PHP. It is not Ruby on Rails. So if you write code, if you want to write a Meteor project, you really can't use Ruby code. You really don't use PHP. Um, while we'll see that the differences in code and syntax might not be that different, I want to stress to you that Meteor, everything you code is only in JavaScript. And everything that you show to the user will be HTML, CSS, but you're not actually using any of the other languages that other seminars might cover. What Meteor also is is a web server. So even if you don't have any JavaScript and you just want to serve CSS and HTML files, Meteor can do that for you. And here is the link again to the demo that I got you guys started playing with. But let's move on to HTML. Um, how many people here have no idea what HTML is? OK, great. And that is completely fine. Um, you really don't need to know much about it, um, because we will go over the usage very, sim very simply. This is what the simple HTML page looks like. This can be like your hello world for HTML, whereas we started in C with hello world. Um, I don't want you to stress on the details of what HTML, what head, what body, what title is doing there. I just want to stress the structure, how you have tags, and that's the angle brackets. And that's where you have your descriptor. So you might have the HTML document, and then you'll close the HTML document with backslash same thing. And you have different kinds of tags, and notice that they're all matched. You'll have like a body tag and then a closed body tag. And inside the body tag, that'll be the contents of your web page. So this web page would simply display in a white background and black text, hello world. Does that make sense? OK. Now uh, I'm going to quickly cover JavaScript. Um, in the words of a previous TF, um, JavaScript is the best programming language currently in existence. Other people will try to tell you otherwise. They are wrong. JavaScript is pretty nice, and I'll show you why. Um, so this is the classic example we start with in um, C. Uh, we have um, hello world. And you notice that even if you shrink it, you have to have at least two lines of code. Here I have um, several lines of code. This can be done very simply, one line in JavaScript with console.log, and then your string, hello world. Now, even though we're moving to a new language, JavaScript, almost all of the skills you've learned by coding in C are directly portable. So um, strings, the idea of strings in double quotes, that's the same. The semicolon, that's the same. A neat feature about JavaScript, actually, is that you don't need the semicolon. It can guess that you should put a semicolon there. But that said, you should always try to put your semicolons there. It's considered good style. So, and also, there's no main function. You just start at the top of the file and read things line by line. I'll quick um, then, this is what it takes to make that Hello World program. And then notice that you have to make hello and then run hello with JavaScript. It's considered an interpreted language. What you need to know is that there is no making. There is no compile. You just run node. And remember, node is the program that will run your JavaScript on a console, on a black box, not the website. So you just give it the file, and it's going to print hello world. I'll actually do a little demo of that for you guys right here. Um, so let's go over to my Node.js terminal. OK, let's move here. So I'm going to start Node. And I'll show you guys in just a sec how to get that installed if you don't. Let me make that a bit bigger. OK, I hope you guys can see. So I can write code like I did before in console.log. Hi, Roger. And notice I don't have to do the semicolon. But then I get this weird undefined thing. Well, actually, never mind about the undefined thing. Um, things I want you to notice is that um, you don't need the main function here to start running code. And there's no backslash n. There are some little features that JavaScript can do for you. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry about that. And that arrow just means like node is ready for another command. So you can have it do simple math, like 1 plus 1. 
And just like in C, you know, um, these math symbols are just the same. Um, I can do console log of a number, and then it prints two. JavaScript is nice in that sense because even though two is an int, like in C, if you did printf with two, you would get an error. But JavaScript knows, like, oh, you're printing something. I'm going to need a string, so let me convert that two into a string for you. And you can also do some weird stuff like hi and then plus two. This is just another example how two can be converted in there as well. So um, with that out of the way, let's just cover a bit more um, JavaScript. So in C, we have types. Whenever we created a new variable, we have to say that it's char star or string in the case CS50. Or if we had a decimal number, we had to say float. If we needed a Boolean, we had to say B. And then once we had something that was B, it had to stay a bool. We couldn't magically change it to an int unless we wrote in the parentheses int of B. In JavaScript, there are no types. Um, you just think of it as var. And var is how you create a new type. So I can have var s being a string, var n being a float, and var b being a true. And one thing that you can't do in C is I can now say after that line, b equals an integer. And that works just fine. Whereas in C, it would say, like, your integer is not a bool. I can't do that for you and make or clang would throw an error. And I can quickly go back into Node and show some of that functionality. So I can have a var a, call it apple. So now when I print a, I get my string apple. But I can also now say a equals 3. And notice there's no error, and a now equals 3. Any questions so far? Yes? Wait, so console.log is like printf? Console.log is your printf. Right, so how can I use a second A version of the string? Or like, what is that iteration that I'm doing? Right, so um, it is the stuff in green gets printed at the console. And what we'll see next is when we move to the web page, we won't be doing JavaScript. We'll be having an HTML template, which I'll cover in the Meteor part of the seminar. And that's where like, you can say, give me the value of A, and it'll put A in your website. Because every web browser actually has a little console. And if you looked very carefully, you would get some information like your printfs appearing there with every web page you load. Yeah, so there's a, con uh, there's a command called node. And it comes with Meteor. So I'll just quit out of there. Um, node is the program that runs JavaScript. If you go to Meteor.com, you can install Meteor. And Meteor comes with Node, because Meteor is just a collection of all these software packages. When we get to our example, I will walk everybody through installing Meteor. And then you can play with Node yourself. OK, great. So another great feature about um, working with JavaScript is loops are the same. Uh, pretty much exactly the same. For loops, while loops, do while loops, if, el if, else. It's all the same with the braces. It's the same syntax. In the case of a for loop, the little detail you have to pay attention to is instead of int i equals 0, we have to say var i equals 0. But that's because of the variables types that we talked about before. Notice that the printf becomes a log uh, console.log. And we don't need to do the percent d backslash n and then pass in i. You can just say i, and it would print the numbers from 0 to 4. If you guys want to try this, because um, you brought up a good point, if you wanted to run this code on your own browser, um, I would recommend that everybody opens Google Chrome. Google Chrome, or any web browser, really, but I like Google Chrome because it's very standardized. Um, you can go to, I believe, uh, if you right click on any website, just in the white space, you'll see an option called Inspect Element. It's usually the last one. And when you click it, you should get a thing to the bottom appear here. Uh, um, let me zoom in here. And we have a few, um, few tabs here. The one you, want, you care about is Console. And this is a JavaScript console that you can now work with. So I can type in the same stuff I was typing before in Node. 1 plus 1 is 2. Uh, var a equals apple. And then I'd print a, and a is apple. 
So in any web browser, Firefox, Chrome, Safari, whatever you use, you have, as long as you have access to a JavaScript console, the same kind of code I was running in Node, you can run in your own um, console. How to get to the console? You have to right click on empty space in the page, and then you go to inspect element. So actually, I'd like you guys to just make sure you can inspect element in Chrome and see when you type in some code into the console that it runs properly. Feel free to ask any questions if something's not clear here. Any type, right. There is only one type for all variables in JavaScript. And when you have to declare a variable, you say var. Yeah. It does, but in JavaScript, it's very smart about allocating memory. There is no malloc, there is no free. So you don't need to worry about that. That's another nice feature that JavaScript provides you. OK, so I'd like to move on. Would that be OK? OK. Great. So Safari looks a bit different, but uh, do you have Chrome or Firefox? Uh, Those are the easier ones to work with. And for your projects, I recommend sticking with one browser because you'll get a lot of, a lot of bugs almost because every browser treats JavaScript HTML a little differently. So I think your life will be a lot easier if you stick to Chrome because it's available on all machines and it's a pretty popular browser. So the next topic um, that we should cover in JavaScript, I'm sorry about the formatting here. I had to stretch the slides to match the widescreen protector. Um, but I'd now like to talk about how you do functions. In C, we'd have to declare every function, like int, add, and it takes an int, y, an int x and an int y, and then we add them and return it. In JavaScript, functions are actually another variable type. So we just say var add, and it equals a function, a function that takes an x and a y, and what does that function do? It returns x plus y in the exact same syntax as in C. And you notice that in JavaScript, you won't be told what the function returns because since variables don't have types anyway, it doesn't really, um, it's not really productive, I guess, to be specifying all your types in um, your functions. And then when you call a function, it's the exact same syntax as C. You just pass in your two um, arguments. I'd like to try this in um, my node. Um, can I change the slide? Mm -hmm. Yes. So let's go back to node. So I'll say var add equals uh, function, taking an x, taking a y. And then um, it knows that the statement's not completed. So in node or in your console, um, you'll notice like dot, dot, dot. So you can keep typing your code. And now I'll say return um, x plus y, and then close the brace. And the moment I close the brace, um, it, it sees that the statement is finished. And now I can say 
um, now I can say add one and two, and I'll get three out. Note that if I just did add, um, it tells me it's a function. Um, and one thing just to pay attention to is if you don't give it the wrong, if you give it the wrong number of arguments, you might not necessarily, you're like, it will make, it'll run, but you might get some really weird result, kind of like a garbage value, you can think of it. So please go ahead and try this in your browsers. Okay, so in the interest of time, I'll now move on to um, the next um, features in JavaScript. So we've talked about functions, we've talked about loops, if statements too, the syntax is the same as C and variables. And now I wanna talk about arrays. I'm sorry that the slides got a bit cut off, but actually in the first section, everything you need um, will work. So. We have another type of variables called arrays, and we use square brackets to denote them. So in the first example, var arr um, empty array, this is the empty <coughs> list, so an array containing no elements. And you can also have an array with um, three strings. In C, every element in your array had to be the same type, but because in JavaScript there is only one type, arrays can actually have different types of values. Like here, we have an array with a float, a bool, and an int. The way you get a length of an array, um, you don't actually have to use size of or anything. You just say array and then dot length. And this dot length, you can think of it kind of like a struct, how every array has a field, an extra variable inside of it called length, which keeps track of how long your array is. So I'm just quickly going to go into Node and show you guys the same thing. So I can have an array, it can be the empty list, and it'll print me back an empty list, great. I can now say that the array has one, 2.3, and then true, so all different types. And you notice it works just fine, the array I get back um, supports all of the values I gave it. If I wanted to get the first element of the array, the syntax is actually the same as in C, you can say array zero, and you get one. I can say the same for array two, and I get true. If I do something outside of the array, JavaScript is a safe language because I won't get a seg fault, I'll get undefined. And this undefined, you can kind of think about it as null, but it's, it can be really annoying when you code because you'll have to check that almost everything you do, you work with is undefined. And we'll see some examples of this when we work in Meteor. Although array four is undefined, I can assign it a value, so I'll say it equals one, and then if I go to array, I have the extra value there. And notice that array three, which also was undefined, stays undefined. So I now have like an array with a hole in the middle. But if I printed array four, I would get one. If I did array three, I get undefined. So the nice feature that JavaScript allows you to do is that lists can change size. Um, arrays, arrays being lists, they change size. And you can specify like any location inside of them and all the gaps will be filled with these undefined values. So we've talked about arrays. Now, the last thing I wanna cover in JavaScript, and this is very important to understanding the code that I'm going to show you, is going to be objects. And um, objects are a term in, a, uh, basically they're present in many programming languages, and each programming language likes to think of them a bit differently. But I think for Meteor, um, a good analogy is the C struct. 
In C, if we want to find the struct student, we'd have to specify all the things inside of it. So it has to have a name, it has to have a year, it has to have a gender. But we also have to give it the types of all those things. And now that we have this mold for the struct called student, we can have a new struct and then we can manually say what each of the fields are. And that's where we use dot name, dot year, dot gender. And then we just, in the last line of code here, I'm just printing out the name of the struct student. In the JavaScript world, there is no such thing as struct student. You don't generate a preset structure. You actually just, in these brackets, you say what everything is. And it's this weird notation with the colon and then the comma, but you'll get, um, you'll get used to it soon enough. And it's actually a really easy, flexible way of just manipulating objects. Um, you notice that if I want to now get name from s, I just do s.name. Are there any questions about this? This, this is a usual, it's usually it's been like a very confusing topic when we introduce people to JavaScript. I'll do some examples of this in Node. Yes? So um, do you have an example, multiple variables of that type? How do you? So like if I have this struct student, I can declare like a variable for the type student, or the struct for the type student. Mm -hmm. So how do I do that in JavaScript if I have like multiple? OK. Um, so I guess the way you would go about it is you'd put objects in an array. And now you'll have an array of objects. Does that answer your question? So did you say s array means s is different objects? Yes, s is one object. So we can go into um, node and just play around a little bit. Well, the first question is how do you make s like a class of objects? So you could create new variables in JavaScript like by type. OK. So if you're asking what a, like classes are, classes are um, treated very differently. And just they have a really weird scheme called prototyping, which you don't need to know about. There is no fixed way to do it. So if you want to generate multiple, you would just kind of have a function or something. You generate your own function, and you would return like an object. That would be the easiest way to do it. Does that make sense? OK. Great. So once we have an understanding of JavaScript objects, they are at, oh, yes. OK, so this is, this is in C. We have the single quotes representing chars and then double quotes representing strings. JavaScript actually throws this away because you can have strings with single or double quotes, and there's no such thing as a single char. But if you just copied the same C code, JavaScript would treat it just fine, which is why I treated it as, that's why I can literally port the code in that sense. And I want to show you an example of a more complicated object. So you can notice that one object can have a strings as values. It can have another list of values. It could have a list of objects as values. There's really no limit to this. So here we, it's just a good um, demonstration of how you can get a lot of different types going on all in one object. Does this make sense? Now um, you can also have arrays of objects. And here is kind of similar to what you asked, like if you can have objects of the same type. But the problem is there is no fixed format for objects in JavaScript. So you have to specify them yourself. And you have to make sure that they're uniform. So here, when I create an object, I have to make sure that each one has a name and each one has a house. And then I have an array of those. And that can be my cottage. And then here, you can kind of see the for loop going on, the for loop being um, just a really common way to traverse over an array in JavaScript. Notice that this pattern is very similar to the C equivalent, where you have I, int i equals 0, i is less than the length, and then i++. Plus plus. It's almost the same code, except for a few details. So does everybody understand um, what an object is? Just think about it as a C struct. And the way you access the fields is just with the dot. And as long as you remember how to use the dot, you'll be fine.
Okay, so now I can everybody read that link? This is the link to the project. No, um, is anyone having trouble seeing the link? Okay, let's change it then. Uh, it's not. Yeah, that's probably the easiest way to do it. Um, great. Yeah. So if you go to this site, um, there should be some instructions that I'll go over on how we can install Meteor and get our sample project running. I want to make sure everybody has the link down before I move. Can I move on? Okay, great. So here I am at the website. You'll notice in the README file, we have some instructions on how to get this set up. You need to be either in the CS50 appliance or just on a Mac. Windows will not work, but basically anything that's not Windows should work with these instructions just fine. But I can make it a bit bigger as well. So you'll run the first pair of commands. These guys will just install Meteor. And I can go into my terminal. And if I run the same thing now, um, I've already have it installed, so it's a bit shorter. It might take a bit longer for you guys. But um, I want to first make sure that we have Meteor running. Um, after Meteor has installed, you should be able to get Node in the console. Is there a um, that would be your user password if you're on a Mac. It just needs permission to modify some system files. So, so the question was, um, if it asks you for a password, it's just asking you for your username password when you log into your Mac, and this is so that you can change system files. And when you're ready, you can move on to the next step, which will copy um, the sample code I have from the website. And um, we'll, you'll get a new directory in your home directory called leaderboard, and we can start working from there. So I'm just copying and pasting these commands into my terminal. Um, in for me, I already cloned it, so I can just now move into leaderboard. And I should have a few files in there. Any questions? Um, oh, you might need git installed as well. Sorry? Oh, OK. Um, I think, okay, that's because um, you might need to be logged in to GitHub to get this link. If you guys can see that, um, the easiest way to do it, I would then say is download the zip, and this will just download all the files. And then once you put it in your download or your home directory, I recommend putting it in your home directory so we can all run the same commands. Um, as long as we have the files, um, we, should, can, we, we will be able to start working with them. Let me know if people are having trouble downloading the files. By home so home directory would be um, John Harvard if you were in, um, in the CS50 appliance. Um, to get to your home directory, just type in CD. Yes. You want to um, run the commands in your terminal. Um, we can take a quick break and just make sure that everybody has Meteor installed, 
and I'll just go um, try to help people out. Please try to help each other if um, you're running into problems. <coughs> Sorry, yeah. Are you both in the appliance? Yeah, um, I have the RSA thing. Um, okay, um, if you go back to the website. Um, go scroll up to the top, and there's this HTTPS. Yeah. You copy this? Yeah. And then you want to type in git clone. Um, so if you press Control A. Here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do get what? Um, G-I-T. Get this? Or get? Yeah. Okay. Get and then clone. So it's very similar to the command you had above, but the URL changed. So before it was this, now it's this. Okay. Let me update the commands. Yeah. Is this downloaded? I guess so. <coughs> Leaderboard. Oh, so you, um, it didn't clone correctly. I will fix that. Um, there is an error with trying to download the files. Let me update the command for you guys so I can make sure it'll work. I'm sorry about that. It should be the same for Max or CS50 appliance. I've updated the command for number two if you refresh the page. And um, with this uh, URL, you should be able to download the files. If you're still downloading Meteor. Yes, if you want to develop on your Mac, but you need the Xcode developer tools installed. I've tested these commands on the CS50 appliance, so I can guarantee that it'll work. Yes, let me go and help you. Say it's this file, then say my password. I give my password. This is Mac. And then I do sudo, but this don't match me. If I want to do cd, say don't know this. Okay. Um, I would try running all of the commands solely in the CS50 appliance terminal. This is what I do Mac. I, I would get it working first on the terminal, on the CS50 appliance, and then the Mac terminal. Oh, so if you, if you do it on the mm -hmm. CS50 appliance right there, and you get that, the state where you need to go to that terminal. Um, I would like to move on, but if people are still having trouble setting up Meteor, Kevin um, is mo more than happy to help you guys out. Kevin in the, in the gray shirt. What we should have is we're going to run um, the last command, number three, in our terminal. When we do that, uh, we'll run Meteor, and you should, oh, I already have Meteor running, so it's not going to let, let me just close my other Meteor. When I run Meteor, um, you should now see that you should see the current directory that it's serving, and now it's going to say the server is running on HTTP localhost. That's the URL you want to put in in your web browser. And on that URL, you should be able to access a nice um, little leaderboard. So notice that this is on localhost, which means that if you do any changes, you're not going to see each other's changes, whereas on the website I showed you at the beginning, um, we could get everybody's changes because everybody was accessing the same website. So let me just go to port 3000. So you should be able to just confirm that the functionality works. You can select different, different um, people and you can give them different, um, different points. So if I give somebody points, you also see that they rise in rank. 
Now, the feature, the, in the interest of time, um, there are three features that I've implemented, and we're going to implement um, deleting users um, as our first feature. Um, but before we move on, are there any questions? Um, you had your hand up? <laughs> yes? Can you check that Meteor is installed? Localhost 3000, and you're in the CS50 appliance? Um, I can do. You don't have to be on a Mac. This will work in the appliance. In the normal web browser, yeah. Is Meteor running? So, okay, there's a distinction here. If you're running it in the appliance, you have to do localhost within the appliance. If you're running it in your Mac, like I am, then I can do my Mac Google Chrome. But if you're, doing, if you're using the CS50 appliance, you have to do everything in the appliance. So you have to use Google Chrome in the appliance. Okay, but still. It's still not working? Okay, and then I can. So just to repeat, um, how do you access the website now? You have a URL here on localhost 3000, and that's you, if you're in the CS50 appliance, you have to open CS50 appliances Google Chrome, and in that Google Chrome within the appliance, you can type in that URL, and you should see a leaderboard. So I'm going to just put it off to the side here a little bit, um, and now I'm going to open my text editor over here. So I, let me just make sure that the code is in order. OK, great. I'd like to now walk through the code a bit. Um, and the first file I'd like to start with is leaderboard.html. You'll be able to get this code um, after the seminar. So I just um, want to show you um, on my computer what's going on. I hope everybody can see this. Um, so at the very beginning of the file, we have our head and the title, which is similar to what we saw in every HTML document. And then we're going to have the body tag here. What I've selected is the main body, basically what's going to get displayed. But there are um, some new non-HTML things, and that's in the double angle brackets. And these are template tags. So you'll see here um, this bracket, bracket, new um, leaderboard. And this is kind of, think of it as calling a function for HTML. This is a special version of HTML. It's the version that Meteor uses, which is why you can display different things, such as the leaderboard names and buttons. But leaderboard tells you to go to the template with the name leaderboard. So template does not get displayed by itself, but it's a function, so it'll get called. And you'll substitute in all of this code right here into leaderboard. Um, the interesting part of leaderboard here um, is just this table. If you just read, it, read this code out loud, it should be intuitive, because leaderboard, all we have here is a table. Um, this ID class stuff, you don't need to worry about. Um, just know that there's a table header. That's this T head, and it defines a name and a score. All these tags, like th, table, um, t head, um, you'll just learn as you go along. It's not important that you memorize these, because you can just access a ref any reference online. Or by the end of the semester, these will just be very familiar with you. After the header of the table, the part that I want to draw your attention to is this each tag. Um, because it's in double brackets, it's a template. So that means for each of the players, whatever players is, uh, we have to display it. And we go to the player template. If we scroll down a bit more, yeah, I hope everyone can see that. We have the player template. And this um, template um, basically defines a table cell where you put in the name here and the score. 
zooming out now, um, we can see that this chunk of code, and that was our player down there, um, defines one of these cells. Each thing that I click and becomes yellow. Um, a simple way I could change it now, make sure Meteor is still running. Meteor should be a server process, so you just leave it running when you developed. Let's say I wanted to change um, all the names or the score, and I would say um, I'm going to add points here. So the change I made here was instead of just score, I add score space points. I'm going to zoom out, and I'm going to save my file. And after I save my file, I need to make sure Meteor is running. Hmm. I'm sorry about that. Uh, what I want to show you that edits were done in real time. So I'll just change some text. Click a player. I'm putting it in all caps. And it should be that if this is working properly, when I save it, it would update. Uh, oh, I think right now the problem is, is I'm not in the right directory. I'm sorry about that. So here, what you notice is um, my change went through. Now say I want to revert the change. I want to go back to what I had. I'm just going to type it normally, click a player. The moment I save it, the site refreshes for me, and I see my change on the site instantly. This is a really helpful feature in debugging, because now I don't have to. It's, when we write C code, not only did we have to save the file, but we had to make it and then run it again. Meteor is very nice because unlike C, the moment you save your HTML or JavaScript file, the change shows up immediately. Um, one question is in these templates, how do I get the values like players or um, selected name? If I zoom in here into my code, I see this for each players. So the template knows that I have players somehow, and it knows that there's a selected name. Where does this come from? That comes from the JavaScript. And if you go to leaderboard.js, this file, now when I go here, we have a few um, commands defined. These, this is special um, Meteor syntax. Notice that you don't need bars or anything. But these are just structs upon structs upon structs, or these objects. And all I'm defining is the template called leaderboard. Leaderboard should get a thing called players. And what is players? It's whatever this expression returns. And what is selected name? It's some more code. Um, the details of the code we'll cover a bit later. But for right now, I want you to understand that um, we're in this code, we are taking players and we're giving it a value. In this case, it's a function that gets executed. So um, we can get the value back when we run the function. Um, this is a lot. Does that make sense? Um, I can change the way it's sorted. Here, um, there's a sort object. And what this says is I'm going to sort by score um, descending first and then name ascending. If I change this to 1, it's going to sort score ascending. So 0 should be on the top. And when I zoom into my website, we now see that the website updated and the score is ascend. The next function I just want to cover is um, click increment. Um, out of the interest of time, I won't be able to cover um, more of the Meteor code, but there are plenty of resources available, and I will be here after the seminar. Um, but I just want to cover the leaderboard events. This syntax you'll learn a bit later in the lecture. This is um, um, JavaScript. We're just saying when we get a click and it's on the increment, um, this hash just means um, ID, on the increment ID tag, then we want to update the the keywords I want you to watch is update and selected player. So whichever player is selected, we update it. And what we do is we increment its score by 5. And that will describe the functionality we have here. Um, after the end of this seminar, 
we'll be able to see some more code. But going back to my goal that I want to change the site, I wanted to, over here to add a remove button so I can delete the player. So to do that, I need to do two things. I need to update the HTML, update the view, what gets shown to the user, and then have some JavaScript that when the when the button is pressed, the Meteor is going to do something. It's going to remove that player. So the, there are a lot of chunks of code that have basically already been done for me. Um, if I look here, I already have a way of getting the selected player. That's this stuff, uh, if you can see it. So if I just, um, I'm going to have another event. So I'm going to copy what I have. Um, because this is a list, I just need a comma. So now I'm going to click. Uh, delete. And instead of players update, I'm going to do players delete. And all players delete needs is the selected player. So this um, function is all we need. I do need to add some HTML here, though. Um, so if I scroll down here, this is the HTML view. We had a thing here, which was an A tag. You don't need to worry about that. What matters to you is this ID increment. And this is what allowed us to say when we clicked increment, we have to give five points. And you'll see that this is a button. That's what the BTN means. And the text in the button is give five points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this line. I'm going to change the ID to delete. And I'm going to change the text here to delete. So make sure everything's saved. I want to go back to my JavaScript to make sure that I have delete lined up here. Good. So I'm going to save both files. After saving both files, we can go back to the bottom. And now we see we have a delete button. And um, one more step. Um, you, you notice you might get an error, because when I click delete, nothing's happening. Um, a way to debug this is to go back to inspect element. I, I'm doing this on purpose, so you can see how you would debug something. Um, in inspect element, we have all of our text down here. I want to go back to the console. And um, what happens when I go here is I get some kind of error. It says there's no method delete. So what this is saying is uh, when I go back to the code, I called player delete here. Delete is actually not the right command. So to find out what the right command is, there's the Meteor um, API. The documentation I want to point you guys to is just at meteor.com. So I have it up here. This is just so you guys know where to learn more. There's a link to the documentation. And um, you, basically, I can just do find for delete. And what you see, um, delete is actually remove. That is the command I need to call. So now that we know that, I'm going to change this delete to remove. So now when I go back to my leaderboard site, I'm going to click delete, and now I'm gone. There's no more Roger. And I can keep going, deleting every single name until I have nothing left. So that was a little preview of how to use Meteor. Um, you'll, be the, um, you'll be learning a lot more JavaScript and HTML necessary to make it look prettier, um, which we'll cover in um, this week's PSET for HTML and JavaScript in the next PSET. Um, so don't get worried if not all of this stuff um, comes easy to you. It will by the time of the final project. Um, thanks for showing up. Um, the link I will update soon after the seminar so you can see some more examples that I've implemented on how to get the more advanced leaderboard that I have on this website here at oneradicalleaderboard.meteor. Thank you.